Hi guys, welcome back to Ajuvet. Today we are discussing a pig viral disease that is African swine fever. So let's get started. African swine fever is a severe viral disease affecting both domestic and wild pigs. It is responsible for serious production losses and economic losses. It is a contagious hemorrhagic viral disease of both the domestic and the wild pigs. And the synonyms are African pig disease, wart hog disease, etc. So we moving to the causative agent that is Asfar viride family that is Asfar African swine fever virus. Asf virus is a genus, it's a DNA virus, uh, it's a double stranded DNA virus and it may produce intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies etc. So the susceptible host are both pigs, male pig, female pig of any species. Epidemiology, actually it has got two cycles, that is the sylvatic cycle and the domestic cycle. In the sylvatic cycle, actually it is the asymptomatic infection in the wild pigs. The wild pigs will be having the infection, but they will not be showing any symptoms. And the infection is maintained by soft ticks and argaceptix ornithodorus species. In the ornithodorus species, they are the biological vectors and the reservoir of the virus. That is, in the ornithodorus species, it is transmitted to there by transradial, transovarial, and sexual transmission. That is, whenever a male ornithodorus have copulation with female ornithodorus or they copulate. They interchange the virus, that is, they give out the virus to the partner. Also, whenever they is producing ova, they also transmit the virus. Infected ticks may live for several years, that is, they are capable of giving the virus to a swine in each blood meal. Aspivirus is the only arbovirus having DNA virus, that is, DNA virus is usually is transmitted by aeronasal or aerosols. Or other direct contact rules. This is by what? This is by tick or arthropod. So this is how the wild boars become infected. This is the normal pig direct contact with infected pig. This is wild boar, and this is how normal pig get. So the epidemiology in the second is domestic cycle that is happening in the field or farm cycles. Outbreak in from tick bites actually. And ingestion of uncooked garbage tissues of that is affected pigs waste is eaten by the normal pigs or the meat of affected and dead animals is or through aerosols it can occur. So this is the African swine fever. The virus is highly resistant to low temperature, highly contagious. So this is the domestic cycle and the sylvatic cycle. You can see the ornithodorus stick. So transmission is actually through the direct contact with infected pigs or by indirect contact or through the biological vectors or the fomites. That's why we called it contagious disease. So stomoxis calcitrans can also transmit the disease. So these are the cycles and the epidemiological areas where the disease persists still. Incubation period is actually depending upon the health status of the animal and normally it is 2 to 10 days. Clinical signs. Actually, this clinical form is occurring in mainly three ways that is per acute, acute and subacute. In per acute, uh, there will be sudden death that is one to three days after following uh, the animal will be showing small clinical signs of high fever, hyperpnea, cutaneous hyperemia and also they will be having death within one to three days. That is very short span of clinical signs. Next is acute. That is incubation period is 4 to 10 days. Mortality is actually 95 percentage. So the chance of death is very, very increased. So the pregnant source will be aborting their fetus due to transplacental transmission. Diarrhea is not seen actually. Virus does not multiply in the intestinal epithelial cells. It actually multiply in the neural and subcutaneous and lymph node cells. In subacute and chronic infections, which is happening in the endemic area, that is, there will be many asymptomatic carriers in the area 
and they will be constantly giving the disease to the health healthy animals so these are the main lesions or the clinical signs perineal edema retroperitoneal edema bloody nasal discharge so you can see the complete cyanosis of the body so see the ear cyanosis and the snout cyanosis so the pathogenesis through the bite of insect virus gain entry into the body or through direct contact or through fomites move to the nearest lymph node and proliferate in the lymph cells next they move to spleen and pears patches apoptosis of lymphocytes so by causing apoptosis of lymphocytes the immunity will be reduced so it can cause the secondary bacterial infection and the disease may prolong systemic invasion also happen and the virus settlement in all tissues except the gastrointestinal tract so macroscopic lesions are turkey egg shaped kidney due to petechial hemorrhage turkey egg shaped kidney is also find in classical swine fever but that much clarity will not be happening in african swine fever pain brush hemorrhages on cirrhosa that is colon cirrhosa and cecum cirrhosa then the pulmonary edema and hydropericardium so this is a splenomegaly so you can see the spleen very well this is very large so the pneumonia there is actually many many point hemorrhages also due to the uh, bordetella infection that is secondary bacterial infection chances very high in african swine fever see the pain brush hemorrhages and colonic cirrhosal hemorrhage myocardial hemorrhage small small hemorrhagic spots gallbladder edema see the gallbladder swelling of lymph nodes and retroperitoneal lymph nodes and pharyngeal lymph nodes cutaneous lesions will be necrosis of the areas of near the perineum necrosis of the foot region necrosis in the anal region point point hemorrhages spots these are completely dead people gallbladder edema the same lymph nodes so the splenomegaly once more this is colon hemorrhage uh, actually the virus does not produce many lesions in the intestinal tract but sometimes whenever the virus load is very high they produce lesions you can see you can appreciate it this is small 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 petechias here this is the kidney necrotize the kidney this is the this is the normal spleen of a pig and this is the african swine fever spleen that is actually due to atrophy of the lymph cells in the spleen and also due to the rises of rbc small small necrotic fibronecrotic pustules cyanosis here sign this is bladder urinary bladder petechia small small petechia so the microscopic lesion is mainly is lymphocytic cariorexis and also intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies in many cells it can be found diagnosis actually through the virus isolation that is from the blood spleen visceral lymph nodes tonsils etc or antigen detection in tissues by different methods elisa P pcr rt pcr virus neutralization testing now we go into the prevention and control complete sanitary profiling should be done and control of the ornithodorus takes proper disposal of waste and there is no vaccination protocol but many countries are practicing quarantine protocols for the segregation of african swine fever pigs so this is the mass culling in many areas this is practiced to reduce the economic impacts and the transmission of the disease. This much mortality will be happening. Thank you.